It was May 11, 1998, when the ground shook in Pokhran and awakened the world to see emergence of a new India. It was beginning of a new era, which is marked with Red Letter Day in the history of India. Operation Shakti took the world by surprise and gave Shakti to India that is now a powerful yet a peace-loving nation. Following the slogan coined by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the then Prime Minister, Lal Bahadur Shastri Ji ne kaha tha, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. Maine ab isme ek naya ayam joda hai, Jai Vigyan. Ikisvi sadi mein, hume apni sena. India has progressed with number of scientific advances taking place time to time. Here, a significant credit goes to Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, who had dreamt and made India a self-reliant, strong nation. We are delighted to inform all of you that the mission under percent successful. Born to meagerly earning Janul Abedin and Ashi Amma as the youngest of the five children, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, coming from a humble beginning with early schooling in Rameshwaram, reached to the highest seat of the country, the President of India. Respecting all the religions since his childhood, he used to go to mosque, temples and the church before going to school. Later graduating in physics at the St. Joseph's College, Tiruchurapalli, he further graduated in aerospace engineering from Madras Institute of Technology. In the first phase of his career, Dr. Kalam joined ADE at Bangalore as a senior scientific assistant in 1958 and designed the first hovercraft before joining ISRO. In his two decades association with ISRO till 1982, Dr. Kalam turned into a successful space scientist and developed satellite launch vehicles for SLV-3 rockets to put Rohini satellite into orbit in July 1980. The second phase of his career started with joining the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, in 1982. Here, his vision resulted in the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, IGMDP, that has ensured India achieving enviable position in missile technologies of propulsion, guidance, controls and warheads, despite the sanctions imposed by the control regime. Under his leadership, India has been able to develop strategic missiles like Agni and Prithvi and tactical missiles like Nag, Akash and Trishul. If, if India is not poor, people thinking is poor, okay? If only our thinking is poor. If you think big, we can also equally become... This has paved the way for India to enter the elite club of nations to have the ability to design, develop and deploy long-range missiles, indigenous missile defense system and underwater launch capacity. He was the scientific advisor to Defense Minister and the Secretary, Department of Defense Research and Development from July 1992 to December 1999. During this period, he played a crucial role in the Pokhran II nuclear tests in collaboration with Department of Atomic Energy. He gave thrust to self-reliance in defense systems by progressing multiple development tasks and mission projects such as light combat aircraft and the electronic warfare programs. During this phase, he, as chairman of the Technology Information Forecasting and Assessment Council, TIFAC, also got involved with the creation of Technology Vision 2020 and the India Millennium Missions IMM 2020 which is an integrated version of technology vision and India's security concerns. Dr. Kalam served as the principal scientific advisor to the government of India in the rank of cabinet minister from November 1999 to November 2001 and was responsible for evolving policies, strategies and missions for many development applications. His fourth phase started with joining Anna University at Chennai as Professor of Technology and Societal Transformation. This fourth phase took a sudden turn 
when he became the President of India on 25th July 2002. Honed with his experiences at ISRO and DRDO, Dr. Kalam also brought a spirit of dedicated service and inspirational zeal to this highest office which earned him the title of the people's president an enthusiast of art and culture he used to spare some time playing veena to meet with his love for music after demitting the office in 2007 dr kalam continued his passion for education and societal transformation addressing various cross sections of society from school children to policy makers in his literary pursuit he has written many books wings of fire india 2020 a vision for the new millennium my journey ignited minds unleashing the power within india are the few books which have become household names in india and among the indian nationals abroad these books have been translated in many indian languages Recognition and respect for his many achievements came through a number of awards that include the Padma Bhushan Award in 1981, the Padma Vibhushan in 1990, and the highest civilian award of India, the Bharat Ratna in 1997. He's also the recipient of several other awards, including the Indira Gandhi Award for National Integration 1997. He is also conferred degree of Doctor of Science, D. Shonarais Kosa, by a number of universities. The man who had a very humble beginning and started his career from shores of Rameshwaram, who believed in both Quran and Gita, who daily offered namaz and played veena, continues to live in the heart and minds of every Indian.